And here to talk about some of the, these results and what they mean are political reporters Marianne Goodland of ColoradoPolitics.com and Blair Miller of the TheDenverChannel.com. Thank you both for being here. First and foremost, we know both of you cover the state capitol, and right now there are allegations of sexual harassment against Representative Steve Lebsock, who has been removed temporarily from his position as chairman of the House Local Government Committee. And Speaker Crisanta Duran issued this statement saying, these are deeply disturbing allegations. I believe there should be extremely high standards of conduct for the legislature, and I take any allegations of sexual assault and harassment very seriously. So I have to ask you both first, is either one of you surprised? And, and talk about the impact on the legislature moving forward. It is not a surprise. The legislature, um, as was reported in a story on Friday by Benton Berkland of KUNC, the legislature is a horrible place for women. And it hasn't changed despite the fact that we have more women lawmakers among the Democrats now in both the House and Senate. We still have a huge problem with sexual harassment, and this has been going on for years. And you've been covering the state legislature for 20 years. Correct, correct. And uh, you hear these stories, unfortunately, you hear them too often. And we're hearing them in all aspects of society. So what is the impact down the road, do you think, for, for lawmakers? I, mean, I think that, you know, this the, these stories are going to keep coming out. Um, people feel, women, men who feel like they've been abused, feel, I think, empowered by some of these other people and feel like it's time to speak out. Whether or not, you know, it, there's a statute of limitations, there can be charges in some of these cases. I think that, you know, people feel it's an important discussion being had right now and that all the dirty laundry sort of needs to come out. And do you think we'll hear more dirty laundry out of the state legislature? Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're hearing that this is just the tip of the iceberg. All right, well, I'm sure we will be talking about more of that as uh, the months and weeks to come. But let's get back to the election. Let's start with the board races. I know, Marianne, you covered extensively the Douglas County School Board race. What happened there? You had two slates of four candidates each, one that was uh, a slate of four conservative education reformers, the other slate best described as anti-voucher. And there was a lot of money that flowed into this race. Uh, some very wealthy Republicans who donated to the campaigns of the conservative education reformers. They've been doing this for years. You had the teachers union, uh, the American Federation of Teachers that put $300,000 into an independent expenditure committee in order to back those four candidates. And in the end, the ground game, I think, for the uh, candidates who won, I think they just had a much better ground game. They've been uh, frustrated for years by the actions of the school board. They've also been um, sort of galvanized, or at least some volunteers that I've spoken to were galvanized by what happened to a 15-year-old girl uh, a year ago when she claimed that she'd been bullied by two members of the school board. So let's also talk about Denver and Jeffco and where things stand there. In Denver, there were also four seats open on that seven-member board. Two incumbents won their seats. Former Lieutenant Governor Barbara O'Brien was one of them. And um, the other, the, I'm sorry, the other one was not an incumbent. It was Angela Cobian, who right. represents Southwest Denver. But we also had two, and they're both considered pro-charter schools, pro-school choice. You also had two people who were not in that camp who were elected. Jennifer Bacon was elected, and she defeated an incumbent, Mike Johnson. And, or, sorry, she defeated an incumbent, Rachel Rochelle Espiritu, and then uh, Carrie Olson won her race, and she's a former teacher, and she beat an incumbent. So Mike what is Johnson. this saying then about what's happening in Denver? They're still, they're still battling things out there, unlike Dovco right now. Right. Um, it, it signals that perhaps there's some pushback from uh, parents, teachers, and the community over the direction of the Denver School Board, which has uh, been approving charter and innovation schools at a very rapid rate over the last seven or eight years. Let's talk about some of the other, other issues, Blair. I know you covered extensively Fort Collins and the, the broadband issue there. Do you think that this is a sign of things to come? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot of municipalities that are sort of looking at this. Um, yeah, I think uh, our Jennifer Kowaleski reported on Thursday that there's 19 cities now eyeing these municipal broadband initiatives. You know, I think that it's, it's some of these rural communities are just just outside of you know the urban metro area that are looking to sort of up their infrastructure as we you know 
head further into the 2000s here. The Aspen cigarette tax was an interesting one. It's what, $3 a pack that it goes up in January? Yeah, and I think there was obviously a lot of people talking about that one just because I think that you know smoking has become less and less and less popular. But another interesting thing was I saw a lot of people talking about, well, why not just go right down the road to Glenwood Springs or somewhere else and buy your cigarettes there? And people were saying, oh, is there going to be a sign on the end of Aspen saying, like, last chance to, you know, get your expensive cigarettes. Otherwise, you go down the road and buy them for $3 cheaper. We were also talking about Pueblo because some interesting things happened in that election. Right. Um, they seem to have approved a, a bunch of money for a bunch of projects except for their jail that... I think a lot of people down there said they needed. They're uh, they're about 150 percent overfilled now uh, at the one they do have, and uh, yeah. But voters said no on that one. Denver voters must have been feeling generous, feeling like the economy is strong because we passed all those go bonds. What do you make of that? I I think some of that may be due to the fact that they can't get the legislature to act on things like transportation. And they approved some massive transportation bonds in that. And there may be some a signal to the legislature to, to get off the dime and get this done. And I certainly, I think that's true too, because, uh, you know, the city council and mayor obviously supported most of those measures, but they were not for the Green Roof Initiative, which also seemingly passed uh, Thursday night. But not night. so easily, it was, yes. It was close still, yeah. but uh, yeah, it seemingly passed too, although not quite as big of a margin as the rest of the bond measures. Well, interesting perspectives. Thank you both so much for being here, Blair Miller and Marianne Goodland. Stay with us. We'll be right back.